everyone, and welcome back. So, I bet this scene looks a little familiar. Yep. So, essentially, um, the route that I wanted to do originally, um, which was Fritz, I can't do. Or, well, I can now, because I played through two routes, but Fritz and a character named Waltz were both locked. And because I didn't really want to do any of the other three for this series, um, just because, like, I wanted to choose, essentially, my favorite one to go with, um... I went ahead and played through Rods, which, if you guys know, was our stepbrother, which was very, very interesting. And then I went through Rumples as well. Um, I haven't done Karma yet, for those of you who've played the game. But essentially, uh, I do know a little bit more about the game, but I promise I won't give anything away. And I highly, I cannot recommend this enough. And I don't say this about many games, but seriously, go pick this game up for yourself. Like, I don't care who you are. This game has literally brought me to tears. I have never cried so, like, hard over a game. Okay, that's a lie. There's been another visual novel I cried harder for. But um, games like Dandelion and Nameless, I paid, like, $20 for, however much it was. This game is free on Steam, guys. I can't just please go pick it up because the routes are long and amazing and just, like, heartfelt. And, like, I'm swooning, like, half the time, but... Anyway, I think I decided for uh, at least this one, I'm going to go ahead and do Waltz. For this, uh, for the other ones, I did use a guide. I'm going to try not to use a guide for Waltz. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to get his bad ending, but I'm going to try and be as uh, authentic as possible. So, uh, I do know that we need to go right because I was messing with this in Rumples. So, we're going to go ahead and go right. And then we'll get back to where we were prior. But hey, this way. You're... No time to talk, princess. How do you know who I am? There's another one. Stop running, you two. <gasps> Come on. The boy grabs my wrist and pulls me after him. He takes off with a sudden burst of energy, or speed, and then I am running even faster than I just was. I'm not entirely convinced of follow that following him was a good idea, but at least the boy seems to have a better sense of direction than I do. Uh, oh, our running causes rocks in the pathway to become loose, and before I notice them in my path, I step down hard on them. A sharp pain shoots up my foot, and I collapse on the ground. It hurts. Princess, I try to stand, but the pain in my feet is unbearable. I fall back down into the dirt with a gasp. I can't. We've got you now. Just hand over your coins, and neither of you will get hurt. I'm not very good at, like, being, uh, what is it? It starts with an I. Like, intimidating, that's it. <laughs> Not gonna be intimidating. Uh, I won't let you touch her. Ha, huh, says the little boy. Well, well, well. What is this ghastly sight before me? Two adults threatening a child and a lady. How very ungentlemanly. What are thieves like you even doing around this neighborhood? Uh, you're asking to get fleeced. It's not like what you do to a sheep. Like a sheep fleece. Am I crazy? Asking? Perhaps I'm in the mood for a scuffle. Ooh! Cute handsome boy has a sword. I think, did we see this already? I feel like we've seen this already. Uh, the nobleman brandishes his sword, his expression confident, maybe even cocky. Show me what you got, sirs. And please, don't bore me. Who are these people? I ain't dealing with this for the money. He's got a sword. What? Come back here, you coward. Uh, the two of us can take him. I think your friend has the right idea. I'm not the type to show mercy. Uh, this is way too much trouble for a little gold. You're late. Sorry, kid. You know how hard it is for me to be invisible around here. Wait, what did you just call me? Hattie, you small one. These two know each other? I don't even know what's going on anymore. I feel ill. My head is pounding and my feet feel simultaneously like they're frozen and on fire. Uh, I think this is where we left off. Um, yes, so we're going to go ahead and skip to the next choice. And since we've already done these and stuff, I can say that I have no questions. I have three good deeds and I get my life back. Easier said than done. You said Cinderella, didn't you? Didn't you just go to the ball and find a prince? I think we've talked through all this um yep pure heart okay 
Uh, we'll be waiting outside. There's some more people I'd like you to meet. I don't remember the exact voice I gave them. It's been a few days. Uh, <laughs> and also, I just want to say, sorry, I'm like not reading as much right now, but if you guys want to see me romance anyone, even if I already have, just let me know. Like, I would be happy to do it. <laughs> like, I love this game. Um, I cannot believe this. I look down at my neatly bandaged feet. I have to admit, while sore, they're nowhere near as painful as they had been two days before. Here's some salve I made for you. It'll help with the pain. Why would she even care? I was the reason she lost her job in the palace. Oh, she probably doesn't even remember me as a princess. What is my cat doing, son of a gun? But still, she has no reason to do such things for me. I ignore the salve for the time being and gingerly stand up, testing the, my feet for the pain. The injury is definitely healing. I slowly walk over to the table and change into the clothes that have been left there. The dress is nowhere near as luxurious as the ones that I wear in the palace, but still, it is far improved from my rags. Oh, it's cute! I like it. All my life, I've never had to lift a finger. And now... I will not let them see how much they've rattled me. I refuse to break. Just watch me, I will free myself from this curse. Well, at least her resolve's good. I mean... I just love this tavern, it's so great. Look at, like, the bottle details and everything. Oh, my heart. What is this place? There are several people in the room chatting am amiably, amiably? Like, I know what that means. I can't, like, pronounce it with each other. I noticed the girl had left, uh, the girl that had left me in the cell by the counter serving drinks. But as soon as the people in the room notice me, the room falls into immediate silence. Awkward. Well, look what we have here. The Ice Princess herself. Huh? They know who I am? I didn't think it was true. Curse for her own cold-heartedness. As to be expected. You remember who I am, and yet you still treat me like this. Well, you aren't really a princess anymore, are you? You're one of us now, girl. Everyone, please, you shouldn't be treating a newcomer like this. Princess, let me apologize. They mean no offense. I cannot believe that. Not when, the, not when the people Parfait is referring to simply smirk and shrug as I meet their gazes. What is this place? Welcome to the Marchand Tavern, a home for those with a fairy tale curse. You make it sound like some kind of holiday house. Don't ruin my moment, Delora. Marchand Tavern? The Marchand was built three years ago when the number of cursed in Angie. Uh, continue to write. Sorry, I just looked over to make sure I was recording because I was like, this would be super awkward if I wasn't. Uh, the goal is to gather those affected so they might help each other break their curse. Of course, I am also here to provide help as necessary. Only the curse and those allied with our cause can stay here. The evil and wicked can never find this place. Most of the people here are cursed. How come these people remember who I am? The curse are not affected by the conditions of someone else's curse. Your condition is simple. Everyone has forgotten you are the crown princess. But because those people are here are cursed, they still remember your title. It goes without saying that fairies and witches are also not affected. Come, princess, let me introduce you to a few uh, boarders we have here at the merchant. Parfait beckons the servant girl over. She's so cute! This is a niece. She helps out in the merchant and does most of the cooking. I'm sure you understand why she's working here now. Ooh, yeah, we understand. I do believe she deserves an apology. Miss Salora, what are you talking about? Don't you worry your sweet little head over it. You don't remember what this ice princess did to you. Huh? I have nothing to apologize for. Clumsiness does not befit a palace maid. I only did what was necessary. Well, it is nice to meet you, princess. I'm a niece Willow. Willowy? Is it E silent? Willow? Okay. I hope we get along. God, she's so, like, pure and innocent for her own good. Ugh. Um. <laughs> really? This is how you're gonna start doing good? <laughs> she. Jessie is, like, so. Okay, I hate talking about myself in third person, but, like, that's what I named the character. But she's, like, so terribly awkward. I love it. I don't believe I asked for your opinion. Please, you two, no fighting. I hold my tongue as Parfait leads me to two people whose faces were incredibly familiar. Ah, the knights. They are faces I have seen in the palace before. 
This is Drew and Valentine. Yeah, or Valente and Garland Bellrot. How did you know that? Both of you were in the Order of Caldera. That's right. I still don't know which one's a male and which one's a female. So, whoops. Uh, they were two of Sir Alaker's best knights. It was a big surprise when they both left a year ago. I only found out recently that it was because they acted against Sir Alaker Alcaster's orders. They were stripped of their titles and dishonorably discharged from their service. What are you two doing here? We help the fairies. They and Anise are exceptions and are allowed in this tavern without the curse. Jorin and... Uh, Jir, sorry, <laughs> I thought it was narrator. Jorin and Garland uh, lend us their strength to protect the merchant. Protect. From the witches, they do anything to make sure their curses remain unbroken. And what about you? I am an exception. Also, I am good. You keep forgetting the good part. Remember, or remember, not all witches are evil. Your curse is a test. A test. Originally, the wicked were cursed so that they could learn to change. Their curses were meant to teach them a lesson. I'm hoping your curse will teach you a lesson too, Ice Princess. I am really only trying to help you. I do not need you to show me how to change. I just want my life back. Well, to do that, you have to break your curse. Try and make some friends, princess. They might even be able to help you break your curse. Oh, I'd love to hang around and watch you princesses try to be... Are you... Watch the princess try to be friendly. We have work to do, Delora. Fine. Try not to make any more enemies, princess. Okay, then bye. <laughs> uh, the instant Parfait and Delora leave the room, the temperature drops several degrees. Now that I am alone, I feel the cold stares return. Disgust. Contempt. As if I'm the reason they are all cursed and have to take refuge in the marching in the first place. Make friends. All I've ever had are my dolls. I've never needed friends. I'll break this curse on my own. I was told it was rude to stare. One of the, um, one man suddenly stands up, the anger apparent on his face. His hands clench and unclench into fists as he glares at me pointedly. Joran and Garland place themselves in front of me, shielding me from the man. Aw, how sweet. You know the rules. What happens in the past stays in the past. And no one is allowed to harm anyone else in a merchant. If you cannot comply, you are no longer welcome here. Tch. No matter, the Ice Princess will get what's coming to her. I like how, like, the people who aren't important enough don't even have eyes. <laughs> he throws one last glare my way. How can he with no eyes? Ah, ha, ha, so funny. Uh, before sitting down again. Break the rules and you'll get what's coming to you. That goes for everyone here. Jorin's tone is cold and firm. There is no doubt- Oh, Jorin is a girl. Okay. No doubt that she means what she says. So these are the great knights of the Order of Caldera. The merchant begins to settle down, and uh, everyone eventually goes back to their conversations and meals. I walk towards an empty table, realizing that I'm being deliberately ignored. I become immersed in my thoughts as I sit down. One thought, however, comes to me immediately. They hate me. They hate me somehow, when I've only ever left the palace twice in my life. How did this happen? The only people who treated me with any respect were Annis, Jurin, and Garland. Is it because they cannot remember who I am? Maybe being in the merchant is not such a good idea. I doubt anyone here would uh, help me break the curse. They'd probably rather see me suffer through under its weight. Three good deeds. How am I supposed to complete three when I do not even know if I can accomplish one? May I join you? I look up and stare in shock at the beautiful lady from the toy shop. Her beauty still manages to take my breath away. What is she doing here? You. You were in the toy shop. Ah, uh, yes. I was picking up some items for a friend. I'm humbled that you still remember me. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Miss Karma. And you know what they say about Karma. Your name is Karma. A suitable name for someone as beautiful as me, no? Uh, Karma, your narcissism is going to scare the princess away. Oh, you are that magician boy. Boy. Oh, how appropriate. Boy. Call me that one more time and I'll ruin that pretty face of yours. <laughs> 
<laughs> you would hit a lady. How savage. <laughs> anyway, I'm Walt Cresswell. I have the Neverland curse. What about you, princess? What's your fairy tale curse? Does everyone share what their curse is? We talk about it freely in the Martian. The whole point is helping each other break the curses, after all. Hard to do if we keep our fairy tales quiet. He pauses and narrows his eyes slightly. Well, some people keep their fairy tales a secret. He eyes Karma briefly, cocking an eyebrow. The smile never leaves Karma's face. Has anyone managed to break their curse? I've been told that a few have. A few? That's not very reassuring. Well, the curses can be broken. I cannot particularly say that that reassures me either. What ails you, darling? Is it your curse? You can talk to us about it. Tell us what it is. Cinderella. Oh, goodness! Cinderella! That explains the nature of your curse. Only, it's been reversed, hasn't it? Riches to rags! That's one way of putting it. Karma, you're not helping. You really are off better- <laughs> You really are better off ignoring him, princess. He mostly speaks nonsense. He? <laughs> princess? Barfay's voice takes me by surprise. I haven't even noticed her enter the room again. May I speak with you? I'd like you to meet someone, though I'm sure you already know him quite well. Ah! Rod's here! Funny, funny, isn't it? Well, on that note, I will go ahead and leave you guys there, and I will talk to you in the next one. And uh, remember, if you guys want to see me play someone else's route in another, like, spin off after this one, I guess. Like, I will gladly do it. Um, I know Rod's route was, like, super, super good, and I love him, so. <laughs> anyway, I will talk to you guys later. See ya!